crazy bastard sons of wrestling, Impact Wrestling this week, the Elite Decay, Fallout, what happens there, looks like we're going to be moving on to the Great War, about for glory, where anything goes, we're going to hell, we're going to the heavens, all sorts of great shit for the TNA Tag Team titles, and that's pretty damn cool. It looks like Moose and Lashley got some unfinished business, and uh, we're talking some big money. And uh, Gail Kim is still striving to become Knockouts Champion. But we get kicking it off with broken Matt Hardy. And he says it's a dark day at the Hardy house. And he wheels Jeff to the Lake of Healing and asks the Seven Deities for help. And uh, he dunks Brother Nero into the water, pulls him back up, and it's 2011 heel Jeff Hardy with the Immortal Championship belt. Matt Hardy does not like this, and a lot of people didn't like that belt. Dunks him back in, pulls him back out, and his broken brother Nero, obsolete, decay, or delete, obsolete, delete. Absolutely awesome, and uh, and they're going to be going after decay, for real. Uh, Lashley then warns the roster, pretty much, you know, he's going to kick everyone's ass, so don't waste his time. Grado comes out. Or Grotto, if you want to be like uh, the Pope. Anyway, comes down for an ass whooping. Simple as that. And um, Moose comes out, and Moose gets the best of Lashley, fuck, making him retreat. Moose looking like a beast. Hell yeah, that's pretty cool. Because really, legitimately, who can really kick Lashley's ass? Not a lot of people. Uh, EC3's up there. He's a, he's a monster. But Lashley's the real deal. Uh, Moose is a pretty big guy himself, so this is fun. Aaron Rex's debut versus Trevor Lee in the Grand Championship Tournament. And uh, round two, victorious, of course. Did you expect anything less? Discus elbow finishes uh, Trevor Lee, and uh, that's it. Moving on. And then we have uh, Matt searching through the forest for Vanguard 1. Finds the dilapidated Vanguard 1 and he begs the seven deities to bring him back to life and yes they did uh vanguard one then goes into his memory bank and uh sees some things about uh, senior benjamin and uh it was some funny shit doing gardening and everything that was really good stuff and anyway <clears throat> matt sends him on his way to go search for senior benjamin and finds him in a barn close by Matt comes by, where did this come from? And if you guys don't know, when Willow was filming his promos before coming into TNA, the Jeff Hardy character, they were filmed, a lot of them, in this barn. And if you go back really far, about five years ago, the Snare Witch Project, or just the Snare Witch, I forget what it was called, it was on Jeff Hardy's YouTube page, was filmed there as well. And a couple other ones with like the, uh, Elmo and Spongebob and there was, there was some funny stuff. If you guys want to go dig into some funny Jeff Hardy videos, a lot of there was a lot of them around that area and some of them were in that exact bar. So check it out on his YouTube page. Definitely worth a look. But the Snare Witch was definitely in there. And it's Halloween time so Blair Witch and the new Blair Witch Project coming up. And it works out. So check it out. And then we got Maria planning to induct Gail Kim into the Hall of Fame tonight because she's just going to outshine Gail Kim's induction at uh, Bound for Glory. So, might as well just do it now. Gail Kim comes out pretty goddamn pissed off. Dixie Carter comes out and uh, she books a gauntlet match with all the women and the winner takes on Maria Kanellis at Bound for Glory. Yes, of course, Gail Kim wins the gauntlet and uh, yeah, she's moving on. Maria Kanellis versus Gail Kim Bound for Glory for the Knockouts Championship. She'll be pretty badass, and I really hope Maria Kanellis somehow retains here, and uh, Ali somehow maybe helps her on accident, and it would be great, uh, because she needs to have a little bit more, just let it go, and push Gail Kim down, or I don't know what they're going with, but I think Maria Kanellis should hold that title just a cheap, shitty way, somehow winning, and just piss people off, and that makes it fun, right? Hell yeah. Then we got Rockstar Spud and Braxton Sutter in an empty arena exposed turnbuckle match. This just is a beat down and um, 
because Spud does get in some offense here, legitimately. But man, chairs being thrown, and it was pretty cool. I'm not a big fan of empty arena matches. Just not a big fan of that. Because it's quiet, and it just seems a little boring. But these guys pulled it off pretty good. And uh, Braxton Sutter kicks Rocks in the pants. <laughs> and we got some blood out of there. And it looked kind of chunky and weird. It looked like jello. But hey, it is what it is. Braxton Sutter settled this piece. And then the Hardys and Decay are out in the, the impact zone. And uh, this is the build to the Great War. And at, and at Bound for Glory for the titles. Uh, Rosemary, though, crosses the line here. And Revy Sky, Rebecca, takes her out, hits the goddamn twist of fate on her. This was cool. So, is this going to be a three on three at Bound for Glory? Is that where we're going? And it's awesome. The titles are on the line. It's uh, just no holes barred anywhere in the arena, outside, inside, through the crowd, in the ring, doesn't matter. And it's going to be fun and awesome, but it's going to be, I, like, I really like the final deletion and the delete or decay, but this will finally bring it into the arena. And hopefully there's something crazy, remember those crazy old um, burial matches and shit, they had to mound of dirt and shovel the fucker in. Something different in the impact zone, bring something in where you could uh, bury someone or some, something along those lines would be awesome. Then we move to Eddie Edwards versus Mahabali Shira. And this is another Grand Championship tournament. Edwards makes Shira tap. Shira's been really goddamn boring. Uh, it just, ever since he's come into the company and, uh, you know, he's gone up and down, up and down, and yeah, it is what it is. I don't know, just the guy, Hasn't he had that little dance thing with his fingers on his <laughs> whatever. Boring. Personally, my opinion. What do you guys think? Probably share it. Is he dead weight? Should we let him go? He is a big guy, but man, he's boring. Then we got Moose versus Lashley. It looks like Lashley comes out, he's talking that big money, big fight, about for glory. He has no no match now because he sent EC3 to the hospital and he cannot compete. And uh, Moose is like, yeah, that sounds like a pretty goddamn good idea. But he can't wait. Strikes, and we get a little bit of a brawl. Mike Bennett comes out to try to capitalize, but <laughs> can't even uh, do anything to Moose. And, uh, well, this turns into a beatdown anyway to Moose with the two. And then EC3 comes back. Yeah, ribs taped up really good, but he stomps a mud hole in Lashley. And he's looking pretty goddamn good here, so it looks like Bound for Glory is still going to be Lashley versus EC3 for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, and that's badass in my book. What do you guys think? EC3 will he become champ, or is Lashley going to pull it out? Um, any game, both guys are great, great champions. So either way, we win. So it's awesome shit. I'll catch you guys next week. TNA, pretty damn good again. And you're looking forward to the Great War. What are they going to do? Pull out all the stops. What's next? How can they get any crazier? Or, and will the Hardys take those tag team titles? Possibly. I think so. But uh, maybe not. Maybe the, the Decay has a trick up their sleeve with a Joseph Park. Who knows? <laughs>